once the whole process is completed to start work. So the stadium was officially closed, and we're hoping that very soon the contractors will start work, and it's expected to last for six months. So, so that's about the stadium. The other things about the NYSS and the, the training that they do for COP members, yes, we agree. I mean, the reason why I guess it keeps repeating each year is because every two years, the NYSS recruits uh, 150, 151 mostly, young people from across the country, and they go through the, the, the training program. Now, last year, or well, actually this year, beginning of this year, we added, brought back the apprenticeship training program, which targets uh, young people who have not gone to high school. So they either stop at grade nine or they have not reached grade nine, and so that they also undergo, uh, we call it the FTA, uh, the apprenticeship training program, which is more of a handicraft training, and that's also 150 young people. So that's why this year we have 300 instead of uh, 150 like we used to have. But that's to primarily cater for those young people that are out of school young people that probably wouldn't have that kind of opportunity. Um, the same thing with the Navy and, and PIA. Now, uh, the Honorable Member for Recama North, Majority Leader, talk about, uh, my, sorry, Minority Leader, talk about the issue of um, where, we, where these young people are. Now, sometimes it's difficult, and yes, we did a, a tracer study to understand what these young people are doing, and sometimes they're doing the same thing that they're trained, either they're, they're mechanics or they're carpenters or some other young people, uh, whether they're traders and selling, but sometimes you don't find them anywhere, maybe because they have um, dropped out of the trade which they were trained due to one reason or the other, maybe because the skills that they have learned, um, they're not getting the job that they want because people don't patronize them and they close their business and go do something else. But that is more for the country, all of us, to decide on what exactly we want to do with our young people who were trained. How do we encourage carpenters to remain in carpentry? How do we encourage mechanics and tailors to remain in there? How do we give them business so that they continue to be in the trade, otherwise they leave? Um, GSI, um, somebody else, I don't remember who, I think, uh, talked about the issue of GSI and that the National Assembly members went there and there is uh, improvement that needs to be there. And yes, we agree. Um, the good thing is the Honorable Member for Talinding talked about the allocation for the Minister of Youth and Sports. And I think this is one thing, even before I was appointed, we keep talking about. If, if all of us, not just the executive, but the National Assembly, also want to see improvements in the sector, and that is the youth and sports sector, we need to look at how much is allocated to the ministry. You expect too much, but yet you give little. I mean, it's very difficult for us to deliver. And this is the biggest challenge that we have. 120 million cannot fund you all the associations and all the activities you have and all the infrastructure you want to do. It's almost impossible. So this is the concern that we have, and I hope the National Assembly would um, give us some more resources so that we will be able to do more. Um, yeah, so the last thing is about the other sector, the, um, the fishing gears for the youth. There is already a, a project that has been discussed that is supposed to be, we expect to be funded by a course that is going to uh, support young people with uh, fishing gears and canoes and the habilitation of the landing sites. You know, and then uh, the last thing is about the, the agricultural part, which, uh, which is the giraffe project that is uh, intended for young women and men across the country uh, with support of 20 youth-led uh, gardens and 20 women-led gardens and supporting 100 young people to be, uh, get into the, the, the agricultural field be it uh, small ruminants, rearing, or any kind of um, agricultural uh, program that they want to do. In summary, I think this is pretty much what was meant for the Minister of Youth and Schools. Thank you. I now on, uh, invite the Honorable Minister for Defence. Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Speaker, Your Excellency, the Vice President, 
um, honorable members of the National Assembly, uh, honorable cabinet colleagues, ministers, um, honorable speaker, I would like to seize this opportunity to express my gratitude, thanks and appreciation to you for giving us the floor to respond to the concerns raised by members of this National Assembly. Um, I will start with the question raised on the economic forces in the country. Mr. Speaker, the continuous presence of the economic forces in the country uh, is a sub-regional political decision. Uh, the mandate of the economic, if you could recall, expired in December 2021. However, a decision was reached for the mission to be transformed to a police mission in January 2022. Well, due to the spirit of unconstitutional changes of government in the ECOWAS block, the authorities of head of states and government of the ECOWAS member countries decided to extend the ECOWAS mission and mandate in the country and also in other ECOWAS member countries. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, if you could recall, after the December 2016 presidential elections, the ensuring political tension and the state of insecurity, uh, it's generated, almost plunged this country into chaos. I think uh, we should applaud and recognize the good work done by the economic in this country. Honorable Speaker, moving on to the next question raised by the Honorable Member on the economic forces posted at the State House. While this is also part of the larger economic group, they are deployed at the State House to defend the seat of government as part of the mandate of the economic mission in this country. Honorable Speaker, the other member also ask about the Gambian security forces when they are ready to take charge of the security of this country. I will speak uh, the armed forces of the Republic of the Gambia is charged with the security of the defense and security of the territorial sovereignty of this country. As you are aware, this is a constitutional mandate to defend the country at all costs. It is imperative to note that just last week, the Armed Forces Council was constituted and launched by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. And the mandate of the Armed Forces Council, among others, is to advise the Commander-in-Chief on the administration and operational modalities of the armed forces of the Republic of the Gambia. Honorable Speaker, the other question raised by the member was on defense and security, the cooperation agreement between the government of the Republic of the Gambia and the government of the Republic of Senegal, and also on the bilateral arrangements on the implementation of the right to cross-border hot pursuit and joint or combined patrols. Honorable Speaker, it is to be recalled that we have a bilateral agreement on defense and security and also a protocol on the operational arrangements for the implementation of the rights to cross border hot pursuit and joint or combined patrols. It may interest you to know that all rights under the defense and security cooperation, as well as the implementation protocol, are reciprocal and applicable to all parties, meaning both sides, both countries. This framework agreement. It's basically a simple, friendly agreement that has harmonization 
of the law enforcement efforts of the two countries. Honorable Speaker, these were some of the concerns raised by some of the members, and I want to take this opportunity to thank you for giving me the opportunity to respond to these concerns. I thank you. Is it a question, Honorable Member? Huh? A question. Clarification. You made mention of the extension of the economic mission, but you did not state the time frame of the extension. Thank you, Honorable Member. I am not in a position to give you the extension period of the mandate of the economic mission in this country. This is to be decided by the authorities of head of states and government of the ECOWAS member countries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Clarification, um, Honorable Speaker. Pardon? Clarification. No more Honorable clarification, Minister. Honorable Member. <laughs> use, your, use your positions as representatives of the people as an oversight institution and uh, a law-making institution. And Honorable so Speaker, a point was raised by me, but I think it was an oversight by the Defence Minister and there was no response on that side. Please. Pardon? I'm not hearing you. I raised a question with regards to the PIU, and I think it was an oversight and there was no response. Sorry, the... You raised a question. And then it's not answered. It's okay, to me. thank you. You know, but you, you heard us say that uh, we, as members, directed that the honourable minister summarise. It came from us. So, honourable. It's minister, okay, honourable speaker. Thank okay. you. <laughs> thank you very much, honourable minister, honourable members. I now invite His Excellency the Vice President to respond to the issues remaining issues and why not the debate. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Speaker. Um, allow me, Honorable Speaker, to congratulate all the National Assembly members for their elections to this August body and uh, to congratulate the, both the minority and the majority leader, the deputy speaker and you, your good self. Congratulations. I would also want to note that some of the ministers that are not here, it is not out of their own volition, but as a result of prior engagement. The Minister of Tourism represented this country at the funeral of Her Majesty the Queen. The UN Forum this year is on transforming education. Hence, the two ministers and the foreign minister are in um, New York. The finance minister is with the World Bank. <coughs> You know, that's why he is not in attendance. The Minister of Gender was with us, but just at the time of dinner, she was called that she lost her brother. That's why she's not here up to, I mean, with us for the rest of the um, deliberations. Thank you. Um, let me try to hold brief for some of the ministers who are not here. But I do so in the conscious knowledge that it is not my area of competence, and I'll just be giving general remarks. On higher education, most Members have touched on the transformation process of GTTI and MDI. The gap that I would like to fill is the Gambia College. The Gambia College has 
the School of Nursing, the School of Public Health, the School of Agriculture, and the School of Education. The School of Nursing and Public Health will be indexed into the University of the Gambia School of Medicine. And the School of Agriculture will go into the Faculty of Agriculture of the University of the Gambia. The School of Education, which is the biggest, that trains teachers, will be hived out and it will be a teacher education university. The reason is, when I went to Finland, I discovered that why the world was saying Finland has the best or perhaps one of the best education systems. And it was Tom Bidiago who said, that the quality of education is as good as the quality of his teachers. So when I came back, I decided that we should face out what was then called the primary teacher's certificate, so that the minimum teacher qualification will be at the HTC level for 10 years, after which we'll face out the HTC and the minimum teacher qualification will be at the bachelor's level. And it will be like this. At the highest teacher's level, I mean, HTC level, you'll have two teaching subjects in arts, HTC, and you have two teaching subjects, HTC, I mean, science, and then you have the professional courses, HTC, ECD, HTC Curriculum Development, HTC Educational Administration. And it is in that form they will graduate into the, I mean, bachelors, so that you have the BSc education in two teaching science subjects, BAED, two, I mean, art subjects, and so on and so forth. So that's the way for, for Gambia College. The other thing is the fee, I mean, that is being so widely expressed here, the paying of fees. It's just old wines in new bottles. Those teachers who are sent to Gambia College to be trained by MOPS, to be trained by, I mean, those teachers of MOPSI who are sent to Gambia College to be trained, MOPSI pays the school fees, I mean, their, their fees. So they don't pay out of their pockets. The ones that, I mean, want to go into teaching voluntarily and are not I mean, uh, 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 nominees of MOPSI, higher education gives them scholarship. But these two categories of teachers are bonded for the period of their training. So if they are trained for three years, they are bonded for three years before they can drift or go anywhere else. It is the people who now paid for themselves to become teachers who have that passion. When they graduate, they paid for themselves. Every year, government gives us, um, the National Assembly gives us money for 500 scholarships, just for internal. And this is what is distributed between UTG, Gambia College, MDI, USET, which is former MD, uh, GTTI, and also the American University, because the American University also give us scholarships. So the proration is equal. You know? On basic education, there was expansion for access, and hence you have the number of schools that are being built. But the, 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 the attention, the policy shift is now going towards quality education. You have access, equity, and quality. So now they are going to focus on quality. You know? The other thing is that just about a month or two ago, they had an international conference on curriculum reform. And they are going to be engaged in curriculum reform. It is not teaching for exams. That is just memorizing. 
If you know how your lecturer takes, as they say, in university, then you pass. So they'll be doing uh, a comprehensive curriculum reform of the educational system in MOPSI. And that ties in well the international conference that they are attending currently in New York on educational I mean, uh, reform throughout, which will take care of the hybrid because COVID taught us that it cannot be the chalk and chalk, I mean, talk frontal teaching as, as usual. We have to go digital in many ways. Um, on, in, in terms of, um, I've talked about the quality, the teacher incentive, well, um, I'm sure the minister would um, come to this national assembly, this August body, for you to see how best you can enhance the remuneration of teachers. They have their basic salary, they have their regional allowances, they have the hardship allowances. For example, if you are posted to LRR, you have your regional allowance, and I think it's somewhere around 35% of your salary. If you are posted to Duntumalang in LRR, then you have a hardship allowance, which is, um, I can't remember how much it was. You know, so they have I mean, those things. Yes, yeah, no, yes. And you have to take the, the boat from, I mean, uh, Queen Ella, this place, Tendaba, yeah, to go to Duntumalang. Right. Um, I think uh, that is what I can talk about. The results, they'll focus on it. Um, it, it takes time and uh, to make, when you have um, in the, a teacher confronting someone about 50, 60 students, it's difficult to de deliver quality. So you have to decongest the classrooms and you can only decongest the classrooms if your teacher people ratio is rational. Like you say one teacher to 35 rather than one teacher to 50 or 60. Those of us who were in the classroom, we knew how it was in, in, in yesteryears. So, I mean, I'm sure they are working towards that in terms of their quality policy to address that issue. Um, on fisheries, um, the minister um, contracted coal, so he obtained permission. And uh, I would like to um, stand in for him, gave me some information on that. And the information I have is that on fishing gears for youths, currently the ministry is negotiating with ECOWAS on a project to finance fishing gears, canoes, and rehabilitation of landing sites. The project specifically targets young people. On, uh, uh, the ministry is also currently implementing two programs a JICA program funded by the Japanese. It would cover 27 clusters for which the drilling, bo I mean, uh, on these um, water, water boreholes. I mean, and also um, 103 boreholes by the ADB. Um, the fisheries contract with the EU will expire in 2025. However, it is subject to review annually. The agreement between the Gambia government and Senegal has already expired, and they are currently working on, I mean, coming up with a new agreement with the help of the African Legal Support Facility, which will be presented to this national, uh, to this August body for, I mean, approval. On the fire incident, there is a report by both the police and the fire service, rescue service, which government is currently studying. And I'm sure it will be, I mean, table before this um, national, I mean, this August body, sorry. Um, the Minister for Gender. Um, to date, the, on the uh, Female Enterprise Fund, or Women Enterprise Fund, to date, the fund has disbursed 17 million out of 23 million I mean, uh, throughout the country. And checks were issued to women groups during Women's Day celebrations in May, June, and also 
when the president is doing the meet the people store. Um, and I have the, the list here. Um, for Banjul, uh, there were 2,900 2, beneficiaries. For Carnifing Municipality, 5,100 beneficiaries. For West Coast Region, 3,000 beneficiaries. For Lower River Region, 3,100 beneficiaries. For North Bank Region, 3,100 beneficiaries. For Central River Region, 2,900 beneficiaries. And for the Upper River Region, 2,900 beneficiaries. These are the, the statistics that I had. And I think it was the member for San Mentaling who talked about, I think, beneficiaries in the KMC. So actually, we have 5,100 honorable members for that. Um, let me start with the office of the vice president. And mostly it was um, it's on NDMA. Um, it takes time sometimes, about a day or two before NDMA reacts, because they have to go to the site, uh, look at the impacts, and who are I mean, impacted upon, and then get the statistics, then start the distribution on food aid. You know? um, just recently, after the, the, this um, uh, problem, we had a retreat to come up with a policy and a strategy to avoid the perennial problem of every year is almost the same place. Jabang, eh, Bakote, Birkama, and some you know, sporadic areas in, in the rural areas. So we, needed, we need to have something comprehensive. We know there are waterways. So we need to act to address the issues of waterways. The Minister of Local Government told you about the demolition. There are two options. Before you do demolition, you must do a cost-benefit analysis. When we did the, ran the cost-benefit, I mean, uh, the, the, the survey in um, Jabang, we realized that there are 20 properties on the, on, in, you know, uh, blocking the waterway. The question is, is it cheaper to do an engineering canal work all the way through the Tanji, Tanji Bridge to the Atlantic Ocean, or would it be cheaper to do the demolition? Whichever is cheaper, we go for that one. That is, that's why we stop the demolition, to make sure that we do a, a comprehensive I mean, cost-benefit analysis to be able to move forward on this. You know? There are certain risks in this, but I mean, uh, it is not like, I mean, going to be immediate or so as such. We, if we are going for demolition, we should look at a relocation plan or a resettlement plan, a compensation plan, and then move them out before we start the demolition and not find them in their homes and demolish. You know, government will not take part in that kind of demolition. I want to just um, reiterate that. Um, the other thing is that we, are, we have established I mean, during the retreat, a rapid response task force comprising, I mean, NDMA officials, I mean, uh, Minister of Transport, Minister of Gender, the Fire Service, the police, um, the Army, in case of evacuation and so on. All the stakeholders are part of this. And these are people who would be meeting, having a strategy so that when we don't, we don't act after the fact, we become more proactive and preventive rather than, you know, I mean, reactive. There is also going to, I mean, they will also do a risk assessment. They will, be, they will establish a risk assessment management unit in the NDMA so that they can always be on their toes. We have the statistics, we have a database, and then we are better informed so that we, in terms of our projection in anticipation of the next rains, what will happen, they will deal with that, and then our, our sta state of readiness and preparedness would be enhanced. I think I mean, that's for the um, Office of the Vice President, unless I'm missing something, and uh, 
I mean, I can answer anything, you know, I'm willing to take on anything that has been said and I missed it. Um, I, I know that the Minister of Petroleum, um, they drill uh, Bambo 1 and the data is being analyzed. Uh, there is, um, I cannot say, uh, I don't want to say something that the Minister will contradict, but I know that they have done Bambo 1 and uh, the data is being analyzed and will await the results of that uh, analysis. On electricity and, petro and uh, water, uh, when we went to India, it's one of those projects that is there. And the emphasis was water nationwide, but more so in the greater Banjul area. You know? And then the rural electrification, you talked about the East, um, East region lightning. You know, and uh, for sure, um, coming from CRR like you, and especially CRR North, uh, I think there is some element of social justice in this. So we will make sure that we in that area, you know, I mean, also benefit. You know, I mean, it's, it's one of those facts of life, you know, so you have to accept that. Okay, um, on, on sand mining, um, cabinet took the decision that, I mean, it is impacting on, on the um, West Coast region, especially from I mean, Brufu to Katong, you know, and it's destroying the, the beach, which has implication for tourism, it, I mean, investment. Not only the beach, I mean, for, in, for tourists, for leisure, but also for hotel building and so on. So it will now be mining from the sea that we will be promoting. You know, it will take some um, time before we acquire that. But meanwhile, the geology department will look at other sources of uh, mining the sand for construction. On finance, uh, cost of living, um, just last week I, ch I, mean, I chaired a meeting with the, the group that is now in the business, you know, um, if you like, the cartel. And, uh, you know, we had a good discussion on those. And we agreed on certain things. And uh, we will um, pursue those things so that um, we try to bring the cost of living down. And we will also encourage new players in the area so that you don't have a monopoly or a cartel. And uh, we are working on certain initiatives, and we hope that before the end of November, uh, we will come to a comp comprehensive solution and you know, go in for I mean, importation. Rather than container importation, we are encouraging ship importation, because if you put your ship, I mean, sugar or flour or uh, rice in the ship, you have in terms of tonnage, uh, you know, more volume than just putting them in some container. So we're working on that. Inflation is a global issue. Uh, we see what is happening in even, you know, more advanced countries, and uh, people are trying to rein in, uh, in, in, rein, rein in on inflation, and uh, the Gambia is no exception. So the central bank and the uh, Minister of Finance were called in my office so that they look at their monetary policies and fiscal policies to see how best we can um, bring down inflation. And that. Um, there was something on river transport. I think government is mindful of that. It's part of um, our medium to the long term um, agenda in terms of um, river transport, and also easing urban transport um, in, the, in the urban area. So we, have, uh, we placed an order for more buses to come so that at least, you know, we break the regimented fares. You know, Banjul, Westfield, Westfield, Tabokoto, Tabokoto, Lamen, Lamen, Brikama, you pay four or five fares just for, for that. So we have placed an order for 50 new buses, uh, and the municipalities are also coming in with some buses, so that at least we have a very comprehensive urban bus service in 
that uh, in that area. Now, this has, I mean, implication for the performance contract of the public service because you cannot also, I mean, sanction people for lateness when you don't have a good transport system. So, if we have those good, I mean, those things, then it has, I mean, they, they can be on time and then you, you can hold them to account in terms of their time budget that they expend in the office. Um, on the dead burden, um, it's not quite easy for um, a country that is not very much resource I mean, endowed. And uh, we would work closely to, um, with our development partners where we can get I mean, debt relief um, and also um, debt swap and see how best we can br bring down the debt burden, which is excruciating. We understand that, and definitely finance will work very hard, uh, and this government will support them so that at least we try to bring as much as possible, the debt burden as, as, uh, as much as possible. Um, on, the an, an, on the environment, um, government is committed to um, climate resistance, resilience, and uh, we hope to deliver on, on Paris. You know, um, and then we will also continue to protect the fauna and flora of this country. And as somebody said, I think in uh, Lower Badiwu or somewhere, um, we realize the encroachment of the desert, and uh, we, we will go for, somebody said, I mean, tree planting, but also somebody said tree growing, and so on and so forth. All the initiatives that are needed will explore all those things, and in consultation, not only with um, uh, the select committee here that is responsible for that, but also the stakeholders, so that we see, um, they also know what, is, what could be viable there. I mean, if you I mean, put certain trees in certain soils, they may not grow. So you might be I mean, wasting time. So we will have to discuss with them. On tourism, um, we, we take note of the ecologies that have been um, approved so that at least we bring them to standards as uh, suggested. We also take note of the product diversification and uh, the modernization of, of the museum and also building I mean, new museum and uh, on uh, the revival of um, traditional and cultural sports like wrestling, as somebody said. So we take note of that. On uh, digitalization, the Ministry of Digital Economy is coming up with, uh, I think, two or three bills that are to be tabled before the National Assembly so that we deal with the digitalization of the entire government system, including I mean, local government, you know, uh, and the public sector, that means the parastatals, and also addressing the issue of I mean, cyber security, I mean, establishing the, the, the data center and the broadband that you talked about. So it will come to, to this place. Um, on transformation, I think the, um, the minority, they are not the deputy speaker, you know, almost did my job for me. So I don't want to waste the time of the assembly because um, he talked about all the good reasons why we should regard this nation as being not transformed because that is final, yeah, in transformation. This country is in, uh, you know, under transformation. It's in a transformation process. It's not complete, but it takes time. It's not like instant coffee. So it's a process. So at least I'm sure um, we will get there in that way. Um, unless honorable, um, uh, uh, honorable Speaker, somebody wants an observation or so, um, I think I would like to thank everybody. Yes. Yes. Andre.
Okay, um, let me just take the opportunity to thank everybody. Um, it's been a long day and you have diminishing return. Um, uh, all I want to, I mean, appeal to this important August body is that um, the front wheels cannot move without the support of the back wheel and without the support of the steering wheel. The executive is the steering wheel. The National Assembly is the front wheel. The judiciary is the back wheel. So we work together. And in unison, we can get to where we want to get this country. We are not competitors. We are collaborators. So let us cooperate, coordinate, consult, and move the Gambia forward. For the Gambia, our homeland. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, the Vice President. May I, on behalf of both sides of the Assembly, thank you and the entire cabinet ministers here in present. Your responses to issues are definitely very informative and enlightening. And I think I can safely say that if not all, most of our doubts have been cleared. And you've proven to show us that you are all on top of the issues in your various departments or ministries. We thank you very much. Honorable members. Honorable Speaker Motion. Somebody commented. Motion. Um, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Member, please sit down. <laughs> I want to raise a motion, Honorable Speaker. Honorable, Honorable Member, please. Honorable Members, be it resolved that this August Assembly do adopt the motion on the State of the Nation Address in the 2022 legislative year by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. And uh, Your Excellency, the Vice President, may I also, on behalf of both sides of, of the Assembly, extend our condolences to the Honorable Minister for Gender, Children and Social Welfare. Honorable members, following consultations with the ABC committee and both the majority and the minority leader, the time now is about 4.35 and tomorrow we are to have sessions. We've agreed that tomorrow we will begin sessions at 12 midday. I now put the question, be resolved that this August Assembly do stand adjourned until Wednesday, 24 September 2022. Today. Huh? <laughs> Today. <Okay. laughs> All right, thank you very much. Today. It's here tomorrow. <laughs> Be resolved that this August Assembly do stand adjourned until Wednesday, today, 24 September 2022. Those in favor, please say aye. Not in favor, please say no. Division, division. Can I hear those who said no? No. Please your hands up.
Honorable, honorable members, honorable members, my surprise is the honorable vice president and cabinet ministers would be here tomorrow to join us. We have not heard them complain. Today, all right, they will be here today to join us. Now, we've moved from 10 a.m. to midday. And we must understand that tomorrow, today is Wednesday, purposely for questions. And that we have a lot of questions, a backlog that we must deal with. And we have only two Wednesdays, that's this Wednesday, today, and that it next Wednesday. So honorable members, is more of a sacrifice. We will adjourn today until midday, when we'll be here to take question to for the honorable ministers to take your questions and answer them. The assembly now stands adjourned until midday today. 21st September 2022 at midday.